Welcome to another episode of our personal empowerment audio program, Finding Yourself in Paradise. Hi, I'm Michael Benner. And I'm Steve Snyder. And our program today is entitled, Accidents Waiting to Happen. Now, there is some randomness to the universe. There is some things that you could say are purely accidental, but most things have, I think, some intention in them, some cause and effect in them. Most accidents are caused by something like carelessness or mindlessness or, you know, just plain old being so stressed out, you're not paying enough attention. I think what we're saying really is we can mitigate and eliminate a great deal of what we call accidents by simply being in a state of paying more attention. You bet. And I think another point, if there's a second point to get in this program, it's going to be just how subtly tempting it is to play victim and to fall into the trap of, well, I didn't intend to do it. I didn't mean to do it. It's certainly not my fault. I didn't want to do it. So I must be a helpless victim. I was totally blindsided when in fact, if you're honest with yourself and you look back at it, this was an accident waiting to happen. In other words, how often, if we could be a little more aware, as Steve is saying, could we see these accidents up front, prevent them, and if that's the case, well, maybe we shouldn't call it an accident in the first place. You know, really it is a, a horrible terminology because it sort of makes us feel like we have no responsibility whatsoever. It was an accident. I had nothing to do with it. I, I played no role. It just It's just the, the dice rolled that way. It's so rare where there are accidents that are actually like that. I mean, I'm thinking if you're sitting at a red light in your car, the light's red, and somebody smashes into the back of you, you have very little to do with that. I mean, maybe you could have looked in your rearview mirror and moved, but I mean, you have very little to do. That's mostly, to you, an accident. You you didn't intend it to happen. You didn't do anything wrong. You put yourself in that place at that time, but you know you had no no way of knowing. But the person who was driving the car behind you, that was like you know putting on their makeup or listening to their CD or whatever, that smashed into the back of you, they call that an accident. And that's not an accident. That's just a that's an act of uh, carelessness. That's an act of negligence. That's an act of of poor driving because you're not paying attention to where you're going. There is something in the auto insurance field called shared liability. I was well into my 30s before I ever even heard of it. I always assumed, I think like most people, that fault is determined one way or the other, like who caused this? And it's adjudicated, like judge adjudication, Judge Judy. Bang, you're the guilty one, you're the stupid one, you're the wrong one. The idea that you both may have contributed to the accident is this shared liability. Well, One insurance company says we're willing to pay half if you'll pay the other half because we see shared liability or maybe 60-40 or 70-30. There's plenty of precedent for that. But then again, what does that mean? If there's shared liability, was it really an accident? Well, for example, let's take that same scenario, except now the light turns green and you don't go. And now somebody smashes into the back of you. Well, certainly there's, I think, more shared liability in that. The person driving the car behind you is maybe not looking at you. He's looking at the light. It's green, and he expects, you know, you're going to go. Or let's say you do go, and then you suddenly slam on the brakes in the middle of the intersection. There's definitely cases where there's shared liability. And as far as I can see, the word accident should not apply at all. In fact, I think in dealing with motor vehicles, I think the word accident should rarely apply. Almost all accidents involving motor vehicles involve poor driving or some inattention or something random that happens that you do not respond or react to as well as you possibly could. If a cat runs in front of the car, some people are paying so much attention to driving they can handle that and not, you know, go off a cliff. And other people are, it catches them totally because they were in a daze, just zoned out. And so they do go off the cliff. So to some extent, even when something random happens, how well you're driving depends on whether you have, quote unquote, an accident. So whether we're talking about traffic accidents or an accident around the house, God forbid, you bang into a piece of furniture with your knee or you fall down in the bathtub or cut your thumb while you're dicing vegetables or something, in most cases you can see what we're talking about. Most people would say, well, that was an accident. Why? Because they did not do it on purpose. Well, maybe those are not the only two choices. Maybe you did not do it on purpose. You did not intend to do it. But it's not fair to say you were completely victimized by the fact that you banged into the furniture, fell down in the tub, or cut your thumb. You were not paying attention to some degree. 
There could be some exceptions to this rule, but I think you'll see what we're arguing is that generally it's in your interest to not blame yourself, but take responsibility. I think there's an important difference between self-blame and accepting responsibility. Yeah, and how you think of yourself in regards to your ability to deal with these kinds of circumstances. I mean, there are people who believe themselves to be accident-prone. And that their whole life is an accident waiting to happen. A whole life is one accident after another waiting to happen. And there are other people who see themselves as very, oh, cat-like, very, uh, you know, quick and and, uh, quick reacting and and something happens and and they trip, but they don't fall. You know, something happens and they catch themselves very quickly. Like my wife was reminding me the other day, sitting at a restaurant one day, and my wife had a glass of orange juice and one of those like little uh, crystal goblet kind of thing of orange juice, and the waiter accidentally knocked it off the table. And without thinking, I reached out and grabbed it before it hit the ground. Didn't even drop. Wow. Not one drop was spilled out of that. It just my my hand like like just reached out and grabbed it. It was just a reaction. I wasn't without thinking at all. But to me, some people like would you know, like knock off another glass reaching for it and make it an even a bigger accident because they're accident prone, they're klutzy, and other people feel graceful, feel, you know, more in control of their their body. And many accidents, I think, are people just being unconscious about their physical body. One further definition, since we're at the top of the program here, is the so-called act of God, which most insurance companies, of course, separate from accidents, I guess because humans are not involved. But You know, if my house, God forbid, is hit by uh, lightning or a meteorite or hailstones or something, in most cases, unless I bought special insurance, I am not insured because that was not an accident. I'm a victim of something that doesn't seem to have a purpose. But, of course, lightning has a purpose. It's just not to hit your house and burn it down. Its purpose is to discharge the electrical activity and the static that's building up in the environment. The word on purpose, that phrase, if we live in a cause and effect universe, then many accidents still have purposes and still are on purpose, even though a human would say, no, I'd had nothing to do with it. Not my fault. That was just an accident. Of course, there are people who cause accidents to happen to get attention. You know, they they use accidents as a way to getting people to pay special attention to them. But but generally speaking... You mean consciously or unconsciously? uh, Both. I think both are true. There are people who purposely do things like, uh, you know, spill the coffee to become the center of attention. I think there are people who do... Children especially... Uh, have accidents to get attention. Well, if you smoke cigarettes for 30 years and get lung cancer, that's no accident. Uh, You wouldn't think so, no. But I think the person with the lung cancer might say, well, I didn't intend to do that. That's true. And uh, somebody else I know smoked for 35 years and they didn't get lung cancer. So it's just an accident that it happened to me. It's like saying I drank a case of beer, but I didn't intend to get drunk. I just wanted to drink a case of beer. It was an accident that I got drunk. That's absurd, but I think a lot of what our friends and neighbors are calling accidents are almost as absurd as that. Yeah, what really is an accident? I mean, what the act of God thing, the lightning bolt hitting your house instead of your neighbor's house, you could call that an accident. But if it involves human beings, it usually comes from one or more of those human beings being stressed out and therefore reacting slowly or having autopilot knee-jerk reactions that lead them to make bad decisions and careless mistakes. So the bottom line is the main reason people have accidents is because they're so stressed, they aren't conscious of what's going on in the moment. They're off in whatever they're worried about in the future or where they're uh, regretting in the past, or they're not in the moment, they're not paying attention to the now, and they're unconscious of what their body is doing, and they're so stressed, and they think they're in danger, they feel tension, anxiety, confusion, and they've got to do something now, and so they make very fast quick decisions without looking at all the options that are available to them, and they make bad decisions because they don't look at all the options, and because they think there's such a hurry, hurry, hurry to everything, you know, hurry, hurry, hurry causes us to make lots and lots of careless mistakes, and we call careless mistakes accidents, but a 
careless mistake is not an accident because, like the old adage, a stitch in time saves nine. I mean, if you carefully do the one stitch, then you don't have to do nine repetitions or you don't have to let down nine stitches that you followed this bad stitch with because you were paying attention. The more you pay attention to what's going on now, the less likely you are to make a mistake take in in the theater you you do, if you do it right it's a take if you do it wrong it's a mistake the, the less likely you are to do a mistake which somehow some people call accidents the temptation to be a victim to call something an accident that you really allowed to happen that was an accident waiting to happen that you could have seen and should have seen a mile down the road and yet you know we pretend we had nothing to do with it Steve and I were laughing just before we began recording today about the quotation that we put in our newsletter this week that human beings are more than happy to blame fate for all manner of accident in their life, but they're happy to take credit for the whole in one. And, you know, like, I meant to do that. Well, every time you hit a golf ball, you intended to go into the cup. But that's kind of what we're talking about. The games that we play with ourselves and others around finding some kind of solace or uh, safety or irresponsibility in refusing to accept responsibility. I think, as I I just touched on it a few minutes ago, this idea of self-blame. Well, if you're not to blame or they're not to blame or that's not to blame, you're asking me to blame myself. No, I, I think you can toss out the whole idea of blame altogether just reject it forget about it think in terms of responsibility all right responsibility to most people is a burden it's like blame i'd have you consider it's a freedom it's an opportunity to choose your response but if you're a victim you'd give your power away to the person or the circumstance or the event that victimized you. You have absolutely no control. Often, even after the fact, you have no response. That word is in responsibility, right? We like to think often of responsibility as the ability to choose a response, but there's even power in taking responsibility for the cause, for setting yourself up, for not recognizing that you have a second agenda in this where there's a payoff for you and a third opportunity for you to receive some sort of subtle benefit even though you know, on the primary level these accidents are not in your interest. They may hurt you physically or, or cause disease or uh, hurt you financially. To accept the power to have some influence in life at least in how you look at and how you respond to things. Even if you don't think you could have controlled the stimulus or what happened to you, you have choices in how you look at it and how you respond once you accept responsibility. But that means you've got to give up what appear to be the benefits of victimization or helplessness. Yeah, one of the real keys, I think, to understand the concept of an accident waiting to happen is to take a look at someone with a new baby where you have to baby-proof the house. I mean, the whole concept is you have to take some time and look at what could go wrong. You know, what possibly could this baby get into that could cause its damage? And and I think what we really need to do t- is, is damage-proof our lives, is accident-proof our lives by taking a look at those obvious areas of our lives where we're likely to make silly or stupid mistakes if we get nervous or anxious or stressed and find a way to create it less likely to happen. I mean, we need to think ahead off times. Let's say that you have a situation at work with somebody that you're having trouble with. They get irritated or upset or angry or scared. or And and you know that kind of reaction is more likely to cause you to make a mistake or have an accident than if you're calm and cool and collected. Well, anticipate that. That when, When I'm with this person, I notice that I get into this state where I'm more likely to have an accident or make a mistake. So what do I need to do? And, of course, what you need to do is find a way to be not so nervous 
nervous in that situation. And if you wait for the situation to happen again, you're going to be just as nervous as you were last time. But if instead you take some precaution, that's always been a word I liked a lot, precaution, and you close your eyes and go to your peaceful place and you imagine your next encounter with this person as being one that's much more calm, much more relaxed, then you're actually mitigating the likelihood of having an accident or making a mistake the next time you're with this person. It's possible you may have never considered it, but life really is a two-way street. Most folks are much more familiar with one direction than the other. You have any idea what I'm talking about here? Most folks are much more familiar with the direction of life that comes at you. And we're really educated, trained, conditioned, and culturated. <laughs> Use whatever word you want. Uh, it becomes a habit to think of yourself as a target or a victim of life in a general sense. And to spend a lot of your life anxious, nervous, frustrated, stressed, and frightened over how are you going to handle this flow that's coming at you. Might as well put a big bullseye on your T-shirt, right? That's the way we feel, like a target or a victim. Life is done to us, and all we can do is fight back. The idea that life is what you make it can roll off the tongue easily enough, but how many of us really believe that life is what you make it, that It's at least as important as the part that's done to you, what you choose to do with the circumstance or the situation that you find yourself in. And this really requires critical thinking. Part of our whole agenda here in this series, finding yourself in paradise, and one of the reasons that we talk about mindfulness so much is to empower you to give up victimization and helplessness and regain your power and influence, not over other people so much as over your ability to make choices in how am I going to look at this situation I'm in and what am I going to choose to do with it. Now, it's simple enough, but when was the last time you had a conversation with a friend about this whole idea? Life is a two-way street. I, I, I recommend it. I think you'll... You'll find most people will jump on it as a marvelous topic of conversation. It's just that it rarely happens. So we want to minimize our accidents and maximize our on purposes. So (laughs) one of the things we need to do is start to think, like, on purpose, what is the best outcome that I can create in my life? And instead of letting life just happen to you, be in charge, you know, set up in your mind the direction that you want to go. Now... Life is not going to happen the way you imagine it. I mean, it's going to change from the way that you daydream or you pretend. I'm not opposed to plans. They just never work exactly the way you plan them. You always have to understand that plans are, you know, flexible and changeable. But but to have some kind of a plan is essential. I mean, you have to have a direction. You have to have an outcome in mind. You have to know where you're heading to. And if you know where you're heading to, then what you can do is sort of plan to get there accident-free. Make it an on-purpose concept. One of the things I always do, I, I have an incredible commute to come here to the recording studio Michael and I use here uh, up in Kula, up in upcountry Maui, from way out on the coast where I live. It's an hour and a half, hour and 45-minute drive. And every time I leave my house, I have this picture in my mind of surrounding my car with this beautiful white light with the intention of uh, arriving in Michael's driveway perfectly safe, you know, like free of accidents. I don't think of the word accident. I think of the word ride at Michael's house perfectly safe. I've been doing this for years, and, and it's just an intention. I have an intention of being free of accidents. I have an intention of driving carefully. And it's, you know, thinking ahead. When I got here, I, had a, I was sucking on this uh, candy thing, and I went to throw it in the trash can because we were about to start recording, and I missed the trash can, and it landed on the ground, and I started looking for it, and I couldn't find it. Well, I could have let it go, but then... One of his cats might have gotten it and choked on it, and it was like an accident waiting to happen in my mind. It was like a metaphor for the show we were about to do. So we found, we moved everything around, and we found this thing. Because just being careless and leaving something go, nothing bad happened then, but if something bad happens later, you can't really say that's an accident. You have to, you have to say that was a, I didn't pay attention. I, I didn't think ahead. So one of the keys to avoiding accidents is to think ahead, to think 
and be on purpose. I had a teacher tell me once, this was many years ago, it was Jose Silva, I tell you who it was, the founder of the Silva Mind Control Program, and I took his program and met him in the early 70s, and one of the things he said to me one day, this was when I had him on the radio, as I interviewed him, he's speaking not only to me, of course, but to all the radio listeners, and he's saying, any time you discover a problem, it's your problem. And I remember at the time feeling, oh, no, I've got so many problems in my life now. It's such a burden that to accept responsibility for what? World hunger? And we didn't have global warming then. We didn't know about it. Acid rain, whatever was the early 70s version of uh, of echo collapse and, 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 as they say, world hunger and war. And what does it mean to take responsibility for that? It's empowering is what it means to have a, an attitude or a lifestyle where you just stop playing the helpless victim and let that be the rare exception. I'll grant you the argument, all right? Done enough talk shows over the years and enough debates with good friends to know that it's the tendency to go to the extreme. And if you go to the extreme, I'm sure you can prove that there is such a thing as an accident happening to a human being. I'm just saying the vast majority of what you call accidents are really on purposes in disguise. Yeah, unconscious on purposes. You know, the three primary household accidents you got to figure, are very rarely accidental. I mean, collision is number one, smashing into each other or something. That's usually just because you're hurrying. And then there's burns. Now, come on, if you're careful, you don't burn yourself. You know, burns don't just accidentally happen. You know, burns are you got too close to the stove or you did something, you weren't paying attention. And then the third one is choking on things. Now, you know, that's not an accident either. You took too big a bite, you didn't chew it enough times or whatever it was, or you didn't prepare the food well. And so, so there's, there's a cause and effect effect in this universe and things just don't happen generally speaking as michael said on way on the edge you know there are those random events you know meteors hit houses but generally speaking there's a lot of say we have in our lives but if not in the you know stimulus at least in the perspective of how we perceive the stimulus and in the perspective of what responses we choose to have to that stimulus we have a lot of say in our lives and and much of what we call accidents aren't accidents at all or they're just a small part accidental and and the more responsibility we take for them the less likely they are to occur the more we can make them less severe when they do occur and the more we can plan to avoid those accidents that were just quote unquote waiting to happen again the name of this series now in its third year we got over a hundred and some programs already in our archives is finding yourself in paradise. That self is a higher self. It's a more awake or alert self. And so, regardless of the name of the program or the entry point of the discussion we're having, you'll find Steve and I often end up talking about the concept that maybe is best described as mindfulness. If you're not sure what that means, think of mindlessness. <laughs> you know what that means. This would be the opposite. It doesn't mean that your mind is full of information and full of knowledge. It's really not a matter of being under any kind of pressure at all. Quite the contrary. It's about putting a lot of that down, the immediacy or the urgency that goes with having to defend yourself against a life that's coming at you. And taking a step back. Not a whole bunch of steps, just really one or two to zoom out slightly to get the bigger picture. That's mindfulness. To watch yourself, as Steve said, maybe to plan ahead, to extrapolate a little bit, to consider the possibilities, to remember that not only does behavior have consequences, but even on a more primary level, your thoughts and your feelings have consequences. Other people's thoughts and feelings have consequences. Have you ever been described by a friend as a considerate person? Usually that's a good thing. What does it mean? It means that this person is being honored and respected as a person who mindfully considers their impact on other people. I would suggest a person like that would be much less 
accident prone, even if the accident is hurting a friend's feelings or insulting somebody. Think ahead to think for yourself, to wake up. I would say we have to consider that maybe on purpose is not the opposite of accident. Maybe in this relationship between accidents and things that happen on purpose, that maybe a lot of accidents have a purpose, and that's a wake-up call, like the pain that comes with burning yourself. I mean, you learn, right? I'm almost ashamed to use this as an example, but I will. When I was four or five years old, the fact that I remember this that far back indicates something of how traumatic it was for me. So I was up early one morning uh, before my parents, and I was looking at, even obsessing on my mother's mix master, this egg beater, this power, you know, big for making batter, cakes and things like that. And I turned it on, first on slow, and then it had another position. I found that medium, and then it went real fast, and I pulled it back to medium. And then I thought, wonder what would happen if I put my finger in those egg beaters as they're going around mm-hmm. and around. And, and stupidly, I'm four or five years old. Again, it's really not stupid because I've never been a stupid person, but, boy, I sure was unconscious. And so like a child that had never burned himself and didn't know what it meant to burn himself, I stuck my finger in the egg beaters and I found out what happens. The egg beaters stop and your finger gets pinched, and it really hurts, and you yelled, and your parents come running out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> That's what happens. Universally. <laughs> and they look at you like, what did I raise an idiot? You know, what, yeah. what is the matter with you? How could you be so stupid? Maybe one or the other even said that. I don't know. I, I certainly, to this day, felt like or feel like that was a stupid thing to do, but The higher self we find in paradise knows better. It was an unconscious thing that I did. I was spaced out. I wasn't focused. Now, I'll forgive myself at age four or five for not being focused, for being a little spacey. And there are times in adults' lives when that's even a good thing to contemplate, to introspect, to to reflect. But we have to do that with consciousness. I mean... Spacing out is not the same as spacing in. It's a matter of are you more aware or less aware. So you may have a good sense of what we're talking about when we make references to altering consciousness or to turning your attention away from the physical world, but it's not to go to la-la land. It's to become even more aware and more alert. And with your eyes open, you can focus back through your eyes and your other physical senses and see those accidents waiting to happen. See the implications and ramifications of actions you have not even taken yet, of thoughts you have yet to even follow through on and make better decisions. That's part of personal empowerment, mindfulness. And so we're arguing that you examine what benefits do I get from helplessness, from victimization? And am I willing to give up about 95% or more of what I'm calling accidents to take some responsibility in my life. Sometimes we give power to accidents that cause us to have less power in the future. For example, if how did you get into this uh, field of work you're in? Well, I don't know. I just, it was an accident. I just sort of fell into it. Well, if it was really an accident, then the next time you have to find work, you don't know what to do. But if instead it wasn't really an accident, it was these factors coming together, you could replicate those factors. Next time. Oh, how did you meet the love of your life? Well, I don't know. It was just an accident. Well, if that's the case, then you can't help anybody else find the love of their life. You can't share what you did if you're quote unquote just unconscious and it just feels like you had nothing to do with it then not only are you not taking responsibility for something you actually do deserve some credit for the next time a circumstance like that comes up you won't know what to do because you didn't think this wasn't in fact an accident maybe there were some random factors in it but in fact i had a great deal to do with making this happen and if i understand how i did that before then i can either do it again or help others do it if it comes to that Steve, you were talking about uh, the three or four most likely accidents around the house. I remember a study not long ago that talked about some of the biggest disasters in the history of humanity, like the Space Shuttle Challenger, 
the um, or Three Mile Island or Chernobyl, certainly, if not mm-hmm. TMI. And, of course, the accident in India, that Bhopal mm-hmm. chemical uh, accident where hundreds, thousands of people uh, were hurt. And, again, it's not a tsunami. It's, it's not a hurricane. It's not an act of nature or an act of God, so-called. It was a human accident. And in each case, when they went back and investigators looked at what happened and whether it could have been avoided, they find again and again and again, even with major airplane crashes, it's almost always the human factor. It's not a mechanical breakdown. And it should have been caught. And the lessons learned are usually about how do we make people more alert. One of the things they found in Chernobyl and the shuttle Challenger had to do with people not getting enough sleep, being overworked, being really stressed. And in those conditions, those states, you're just not paying attention. And it's just not smart to keep writing off as an accident what could have been avoided, an accident so-called waiting to happen, if only we were more alert, more aware, more mindful, not just more awake in terms of I'm not sleeping, so I'm more awake, but, you know, where you're really focused, we call it focused passion. That's the name of our website. That's what we're talking about. And again, I'll grant you the exception to the rule. There's got to be some example of an accident every once in a while that you could not see in advance and couldn't avoid, but I think the vast majority of them, as I said a few minutes ago, really can be avoided. And the challenge that we're offering you is to begin to avoid them, to find the power and the freedom in taking responsibility for your life. Yeah, the other side of that equation are those accidents that are on purposes. I mean, people who are passive-aggressive and they spill their bowl of soup on somebody they don't like. Now, you could say that was an accident, but in their mind, there's all this anger at that person. And so the opportunity, they don't really mean, to, you know, this, there's more to a lot of accidents than accidents. So what we're saying is on one end, yes, there is that rare occurrence where things are purely random, the meteor hit the house, but there's also this other side where it wasn't random at all. It was just a, a manifestation of a, an emotion, of anger, of a, upsetness that, that caused you to, to be careless semi-intentionally. You know, there's, there's a, a range here of intentionality and unintentionality and semi-intentionality. What we're saying is let's argue it from the point of view of take as much responsibility as you can, avoid those accidents in the future that you can see coming, the ones that are waiting to happen, and take a look at those kinds of accidents that you have in the past been prone toward and see if you can create a way of manifesting, avoiding those in your life. And also take responsibility for those things you've created in your life that you say were just accidents, but they aren't accidents. You had a lot to do with creating the life that you're in right now. The more responsibility you take for what you've already done and don't give it credit as accidental, the more power you have to do more in the future. And again, we need some tools, right? Some skills. So we find the best place to be mindful and there's increasing amounts of brain research, hardly a day goes by that there isn't new research from major institutions of science in the United States and Europe and indeed around the world about neuroplasticity, about conscious awareness, about the way in which the alpha brainwave level that we talk about as paradise, this level of feeling safe and relaxed where brainwave frequencies reduce themselves all the way down to about 10 cycles or so, somewhere between 8 and 12 cycles per second. It's that wonderful feeling we try to recapture all the time on the weekends or on a vacation or, you know, that wonderful date with the first love or the day you got the brand new puppy or it's just that wonderful feeling where life is working and everything's coming up roses. You can go there on demand. You don't have to wait for a reason. Just like you don't have to wait for a reason to be happy. You could be happy for no reason. You can come to paradise for no reason. Other than to enjoy the wonderful benefits of alertness itself. So let's show you what we mean. You've done this before. Close your eyes. 
get comfortable. A couple of shoulder shrugs, a few head rolls in one direction or the other. And then with shoulders back, your rib cage open, just take a few slow, deep breaths. And I think you'll probably be able to notice right away a tendency to hurry up and breathe. <laughs> Give it up. Let go. This is going to take about eight minutes. So give yourself that time to relax. And after you've taken three or four of these nice, slow, unhurried, deep breaths, then allow your body to breathe itself at its own rhythm, its own cadence. Turn that over to autopilot and gently place your attention on the bottom of your nose. And as the witness, as one who's watching mindfully, not the breather, but the one that's watching this body all by itself doing the breathing, just spend a few moments doing nothing else. But watching your body breathe itself all by itself and with every breath you feel safer physically more relaxed mentally quieter and emotionally more calm and in a while when you emerge from this trance, there's a real good chance, not just happenstance, that you'll feel better than you felt before. You'll feel stronger, you'll feel inspired, you'll just feel more. But let's not let it be an accident. Let's set a brand new precedent with an intention to emerge in this way. It's not an accident. It's an on purpose that you play. It's your purpose to emerge from this beautiful trance. Not chance, not accident, not happenstance. It's your purpose to emerge from this beautiful trance, feeling better than you felt before, feeling stronger and brighter and just feeling more. It's your intention. It's your purpose. It's what you will create. It's not an accident that you'll wake up feeling great. Remember times in your life when you really did feel like a victim, like a bit of flotsam or jetsam floating on the top of the ocean and you were just tossed about here and there by the waves and the currents. You had no sail, you had no rudder, no keel, no way of orienting yourself, much less motivating yourself. You were a complete victim, and here comes another wave, and then a current drags you in this direction and that. You know how that feels. You remember times in your life when you just couldn't get your feet underneath you. And you only knew the side of life that was being done to you. You felt like a target or a victim. Well, consider now that life is always a two-way street. That you always have an opportunity to consider choices in two areas. First, your perception or point of view. You might even call it an attitude. You have a choice here on how you frame a particular situation, how you look at it. And then there's a second choice when it comes to turning knee-jerk reactions into conscious responses. You can choose even-tempered, well-reasoned responses. You can take the time necessary to think for yourself, to question authority in the way things have always been done, and the fact that maybe 
the fact they're being done this way around you is merely a fact that it's always been done that way, but you have a new way, perhaps a better way. You'd have to be mindful to consider that choice and then to seize upon that option and initiate it. And further still, I'd have you consider what it means and how it feels right now in your body to identify yourself as a considerate person. A person who considers that there are always consequences. We do live in a cause and effect universe. In spite of all that we've said today about on purposes and accidents, even accidents have causes. Things don't just happen in this universe for no reason. There's always some stimulus, some impetus behind it. And we could even daisy chain our way back. Well, if this is an effect, then something must have caused it. But that cause, maybe that was an effect of a previous cause. And hand over hand, you work your way back to the prime cause. It's usually an attitude or a level of unconsciousness. Why be a helpless victim to unconsciousness and then defend yourself? as an unconscious accident victim, when you could stand up, take a breath, and say, you know, you're right. I'm not sure whether that was an accident or not, but I could learn from it. And in the future, I could see it coming a mile away. Accidents waiting to happen. So think of all the good you've done and the time you've had well spent and recognize that none of this was done by accident. It was your intention. It was your creation. Take responsibility and find that by taking responsibility for what you've done, you further empower your mind to create what you choose. The mind, such a powerful tool to use, taking responsibility to look ahead and avoid what you dread and go for what you love and obstacles rise above. This can be done on purpose. No need for accident. Decide where you want to go and set a precedent. This is my intention. On purpose, I go here. Just have your precedent and your intention in your mind be crystal clear and then take one step and then the next mindful as you go aware of the step you're taking now aware of what you know and allowing random factors as they happen to occur to find you very flexible, fleet-footed, and quite sure that you can adjust to whatever's in the way. No accidents here in play. You're on purpose, heading toward your dream. Step by step, on purpose, exactly as it seems. Remember the room around you, the room you'll see in a moment when we ask you to open your eyes wide awake and alert, rested and refreshed and re-energized. You're going to wake up in a new way. You're going to wake up immediately and colors are going to seem brighter and edges more well-defined. I'd like you to prepare by putting just a little smile on your face. And then somewhere in the center of your body, near the heart, see if you can't believe in that smile. Dedicate yourself to forming, initiating an attitude of responsibility 
as you prepare to open your eyes in a moment, wide awake and alert. And inhale now, slowly through your nose, filling your lungs. Hold as you peek, and now as you begin to exhale, open your eyes, wide awake and alert, more responsible than ever before. You know, I was reading there was, uh, either last year or the year before, 6.5 million car accidents uh, in the United States. One every uh, less than five seconds. Less than half of them caused anybody to be hurt which was interesting. But it seems to me, just as a concept, that if most everybody, before they got in their car and started to drive, had the intention in mind of getting to their destination safely, just that thought puts the autopilot on alert to make sure that happens. And so you don't go unconscious of those things that are in your peripheral vision. You notice those things. You find that you don't, like, look down to change the radio station because your mind knows that an accident could happen. If I Just the intention of driving from here to wherever my destination is safely, I think, would avoid a great deal of accidents. And around the house, primarily, it's just don't hurry. You know, hurrying is what causes most accidents around the house, I think. And if you get pretty good at doing that before you get in the car or as you get in the car, imagine doing that before you open your mouth, right? Yeah. You engage your brain. There you go. <laughs> think. Words have consequences, too. It's just a matter of waking up. Mindfulness is the next stage of human evolution. It certainly is a central part of the next leap in human consciousness. Human beings are going to wake up and discover that they're not to blame, and yet we are responsible. It's a big step, but there's a waking up process, and we have to use the brains we've been given, and we're still evolving. You know, you have to think of evolution as more than just what Darwin wrote 150 years or so ago about the evolution of the physical species. We have evidence that the brain is evolving, and more to the point, the consciousness, the awareness, your true higher self that works through the brain and then every other organ and bit of tissue in the body, that conscious awareness is evolving too. Just remember, the higher self never says oops. Mm. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, thanks for listening. Be sure and take your friends to Focused Passion. Tell them what we're up to. Send them a sample program. Several, if you wish, you can forward as many as you want with that gadget right below the built-in player at FocusedPassion.com. And remember, the entire archives of 125 shows, if you've got a problem uh, need to solve or a heart that needs healing, we've probably got a program just for you. So we'll talk to you next week. As always, be gentle, love life, and take care of each other. For Steve Snyder, this is Michael Benner. Aloha from Maui.